Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Justin Wolf from Wolf Customs. So I've been asked how I dye my leather and how I make it where it comes out so uniform and everything else. Well, you have to understand that different dyes require different techniques. The dye that I use is the Phoebeans brand professional oil dye. Okay, I don't have one of the bottles on hand it looks just like this except for it's dye not edge coat this particular dye I have found that the best way to apply it is when your what your leather is damp or wet in past videos I've had it to where you know I apply this stuff whenever my leather is dry but as time has gone on I found that, you know, when my leather was dry, the pores were closed and dried up and everything else, and it just wasn't absorbing the dye as, as well as it should. So I found that um, if I dampen or wet my leather, the dye really penetrates. So it's what I'm going to do today is I'm actually working on a five carry option sheath for a BK2 for a customer and I've got the the sheath or the main portion of the sheath soaking in uh, warm water right now so we're gonna pull that out and we're not necessarily going to wet form but we're gonna suggest to the leather how we want it to shape and then we're gonna let it sit and then we're going to apply some dye now you'll notice that my BK2 is not wrapped up, okay? This is not the customer's BK2, this is my personal BK2. If this was a customer's, I would wrap it up in saran wrap, you know, to protect the blade and everything else. But it's mine, it's coated, I'm not overly concerned about it. But if it was a customer's, absolutely, I'd be wrapping it up. So let's go ahead and pull this leather out. First thing we're going to do is I'm just going to suggest to the leather that I want it to fold in half, just like this. And we're simply going to put the knife in the sheath. thing. We're just going to sit here and we're going to work this leather until that nice sloppy wetness starts to leave and it starts to become damp. So after we've worked this thing down now it's no longer just sopping wet it's quite damp. Now we're going to apply our dye. There's always a discussion on these wool daubers right here that I use to apply the dye with. Everybody always wants to know, do you have to uh, throw away the wool dauber after you've used it? And the answer is no, you don't. If you keep it in a Ziploc baggie like that, you can use it over and over and over again. I mean, I bet you I've had this one wool dauber that I've used over and over again for six six months now probably you know 
and I'll change it out here very quickly but it just goes to show that you don't have to waste that money so we're gonna open this up a little bit here and we're gonna start applying some dye on the inside now you don't have to apply dye on the inside of your sheets a lot of people don't I personally find it tacky when people don't though especially if you're gonna sell your products this looks nicer when it's finished when your inside isn't dyed it's in my opinion it's not finished The other good thing about having your leather damp when you apply your dye is your dye goes a lot further. It doesn't take as much. It really penetrates into the leather nice. And on the inside, on the flush side of your leather, oftentimes it'll take just one coat. Now if you're doing any kind of heavy duty um, wet forming then you're going to want to let your leather dry just a little bit more than this and you'll still get the same effect but like I said I'm not wet forming this leather I'm just suggesting to the leather how I want it to lay. BK2 is so severe and it's designed that there's really no need to have it really wet formed. And we're just going to go around it until it's a nice even finish all the way around. And then you're going to want to hang it and let it dry. Okay? Don't lay this down on a table and let it dry. Hang it up in the air, suspend it, and let it dry. If you lay it on a table, it will not die consistently. You'll have dark spots, light spots, and all that good stuff. Okay, so this is the stage that a lot of people get frustrated. When this thing first gets dry, you can see that there's a nice residue all over it and everything else and some streaking and all that good stuff. Don't get frustrated because we're not done. The dye is just simply dry. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to buff this thing out really well. I personally use a uh, scrap of wool, but I mean, you can use, you know, like a cotton shirt or anything like that. You can see just by that short period of time, it's taking that residue off and it's starting to put some luster into it.
and once you get it all buffed off and everything else, this is when I apply my first coat of leather conditioner. Now I use two different kinds. I have this here, which is the Obanoff's leather oil, and then the Obanoff's heavy duty LP. I start with the oil. When I wet form anything or wet any leather, I first apply the oil to really penetrate deep into the leather and get some of the nutrients and everything else back into it. Now this stuff goes a very long ways, so you do not have to apply a bunch of it. We're just going to work that into the leather. see that when you wet form anything or wet down leather it really dries it out and you can see that that just soaked that leather conditioner up I'm going to put just a little bit more on And don't panic. I mean, yes, it's dark now, but it will lighten back up to the color that you desire. It might take it up a shade, but that's about it. Now I'm probably going to go ahead and do one more coat. So let's go ahead and put one more coat on this thing. Then after I put one more coat on this thing, I will no longer use the oil. And at that point, I'll start conditioning with that. And finally, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply a finish to our leather. So that way the dye doesn't bleed out as much. that side dry up a little bit and I'll flip it over and do the other side.
And lastly, once that finish dries, we're going to go through and we're going to just buff it up. One last time. And here is what your finish looks like when we're all done. Nice and even. Just has a nice luster to it. So at this point you're done. The only thing that you uh, that you have to do from here on out is just keep it treated, keep it oiled and everything else and it should uh, last you a lifetime. So I hope this has definitely answered any questions that everybody has had when it comes to dyeing sheaths and everything else. And You know it's kind of funny because I have a lot of people ask me why I'm so open with you know my uh, my skill set and everything else and why I share how to do this this trade and everything else because um, you know I, I, I sell these items and make a living doing this well <clears throat> two reasons number one if someone really wants to learn this trade they're going to learn it irregardless of whether or not I share you know how I personally do it or anything else um, as I did. You know, I didn't have anybody to teach me this trade. I just jumped in head first and learned it myself. So, you know, there's going to be um, those people out there. So, irregardless if I show anybody, they're going to do it anyway. Um, the other thing is, is sometimes people want to learn it until they see just how much work actually goes into something. And, um, you know, then they don't want to do it any anymore. Um, and then you got people that just watch the videos for the fun of it and when they watch my videos and they see how many steps actually went into just this section right here to get that nice color makes them realize that I pour my heart and soul into their product so it's as simple as that really um, and one last thing before I go is I've had a lot of inquiries on when I'm going to get my website up and everything else. And um, my good friend uh, Joe Mobley at uh, Feral Woodcraft is actually working on a website for me right now. Um, I would I would suspect it will be up, you know, here in a couple days or something like that. So anyway, I apologize for the delay on that, guys. And uh, I apologize um, that you're not able to find, you know, my product line and everything else. Um, right now, if you guys have any questions on what it is that I make, what I do and everything else, please just contact me. I've got hundreds of pictures that I can share. And if you come to my uh, Facebook group, Wolf Customs, you know, I've got a lot of photo albums and everything else there that you can look at as well. But anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And as always, have a good one.